This lesson covers some of the configurations we can make on our DNS server. Most of the configurations are set by right clicking on our server and looking at properties. We can firstly set which interfaces the DNS service actually listens on. For example, if we had a DNS server with multiple network cards, we may only want to configure some of them to actually offer the DNS service. We can configure our forwarders. So these are DNS servers that if this server is not authoritative, i.e. it doesn't contain those zones being queried, these are the servers it would forward those requests onto. Notice I can actually say use those root hints if no forwarders are available. So if I don't have forwarders configured, it's going to use these root hints. Now these are generally nothing you will configure. You will not change these. These are a centrally maintained list that Microsoft will actually update through Windows Update should a change be required. But if there is something specific you need, maybe a fix for some reason, you can modify them yourself. The advanced tab gives us a lot of options we can perform. Now generally you're going to leave these default ones as they already set. Of interest are the round robin and netmask ordering. If you consider a typical medium to large organization, you are going to have many different locations. And let's say for example your domain controllers. You may have domain controllers in lots of different sites. What Netmask ordering does is, if a client queries for a domain controller to DNS, Netmask ordering will actually return all the different results in the closest order for that client. So it will look at the client's IP address, therefore work out its subnet and therefore Active Directory site, and return the results in the correct order. Because for a single name, I may have many, many different results. I can have lots of IP addresses mapped to a single name. Round Robin simply randomizes the results. So if I had 10 different matches for a certain name, each time it gets those requested, it would rotate the order in which they are presented to the client. I have my root hints. I can configure various debugging. So if I am having challenges, if maybe things are not working as expected, I can turn on certain levels of logging, which will actually go out to a file, which I can then inspect. You can set the amount of event logging. So these were actually written to a special event log just for DNS. As you can see here, I've opened up Event Viewer. I can see Applications and Services Logs and DNS Server. This is showing me all the information related to DNS. And I can control how much information is logged here. In my example, I'm logging all events. However, you may say we'll only log errors and warnings or only errors. I can also do monitoring of my DNS service. So for example, I can query a test right now to test the functionality of this server. I can also configure this test to automatically run at a specific interval to make sure my DNS service is basically responding. One of the challenges we face is we might ping a server, i.e. is that server there? And just because a server returns a ping response, that just means the TCP stack is performing. It does not mean services or applications on that server are performing as expected or in a timely fashion. So using this type of synthetic transaction, i.e. pretending I have a DNS request, actually ensures the DNS service itself is functioning. And I can set security, for example, on my server. I can also configure items such as aging and scavenging. So again, I may have clients who can dynamically register their own records. What I can actually do here is, if a record is older than a certain time, I can actually go and delete those records automatically. So I can say if I want that scavenging to be performed between its last timestamp and when it needs to be refreshed. So this is a good way to keep your zones clean. I can say go and perform this right now. So I actually go and trigger that scavenge operation. I have a local cache. So as I talked about before, every time a DNS request comes in, my DNS server must resolve that. So it may go to the root hints and then com, Microsoft, Savaltech, whatever the target is, or it's going to query its ISP's DNS server. Now to be efficient, rather than constantly having to go through that whole iteration every time a client requests a name lookup, the server will actually cache lookups. Now these will be returned as non-authoritative. Basically, when it's made that lookup, it caches that result for a certain period of time, a time to live. 
I can actually view this cache. So if I go to view and turn on advanced, so if advanced is disabled, I do not see that cache information. If I go to view advanced, I can now go and look at all the lookups in the environment. And I can actually see well, what records were queried in that environment. Now I can clear this cache. And the same on a client. So your local client machine has its own cache. So instead of it querying the DNS server, it will actually cache records itself. And again, on your local client, if you want to flush that, if you look at the question mark, you'll actually see I can do a flush DNS. I can do a display DNS, which actually shows me the results I currently have in my local cache. And I can flush it to wipe it out. So that's on a local client level, your Windows 8 machine, for example. So if you're troubleshooting a name resolution, the first thing you may want to do is flush the cache on the client with the flush DNS command. Also check what's in the cache and maybe flush that out as well. So you can see now I flushed that out. I lost a lot of the records as a client actually performs name resolutions. So if I now go into a command and I look up infiniteskills.com, it gives me that response. And what I'll now see, if I refresh, I've now got infinite skills and it's now cached that. So now I can look it up again and it will come back instantly. And notice it's non-authoritative because this is coming from a cache. It's probably coming from my higher level DNS server I queried at the ISP. So it's not coming from the original name server, but it's still a good result. It's checked it, it's within the time to live. While I've been showing you this from the graphical interface, all of these things can be done from PowerShell. And I would strongly encourage you to look, for example, in the integrated scripting environment, and just type in DNS in the command window, and you'll see all the different options available to you. Forders, DS settings, DNS server itself. I can do everything from PowerShell as well as the graphical interface. There is also a powerful command line utility. So DNS, command, I can do a lot of the configurations from here as well. I can add zones, I can add records, I can enable functionality. So take some time to experiment in these various utilities to actually how you would perform the various types of configuration.